Welcome to our second OBI Bengals fan highlight. We are joined by a guy that if you've watched any Bengals games, you surely have seen him in the crowd. He's impossible to miss. He's the guy that wears all, and I've been informed, it is not makeup, it is face paint. I've been the guy, he is the guy with the tiger face paint. Tony the Tiger is joining us for our second, like I said, our second Bengals fan highlight. Tony, how you doing? I'm doing well. I appreciate you guys and appreciate the invite. It's nice to meet you, uh, Jason and Kevin. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for doing this again. So this is a a, a thing that we're doing monthly. We started out with the Bengal gym and uh, we're going to try to highlight different prominent Bengals fans, longtime Bengals fans that have been in the community for a long time. We're going to highlight one every month. Uh, I know that we got some questions. Kevin, why don't you kick us off? Uh, We always kind of start with going back memory lane kind of a thing. Um, First memory, just as a Bengals fan, and then it'd be like the first, first one. But when do you remember really becoming a fan of the Bengals? Was it a play? Was it a game? Was it a player? What do, what do you think of when you think of like way back when you became a Bengals fan? Uh, so, yeah, so uh, being uh, in middle school, um, you know, I watched, you know, the Bengals play and all that kind of stuff. But I really, truly wasn't a fan until uh, Anthony Munoz, Jim Breach um, came out to uh, actually my middle school. And it was uh, one of those, um, you know, drug free type uh, events and just interacting with them. And, you know, and you're seeing, the, you know, one of the major sports uh, players in front of you and just how they interacted with us and that kind of thing. So that kind of really drove my interest uh, more into the Bengals um, and Anthony Munoz. Uh, you know, I played Pee Wee and youth and, and all through high school as well. And I was a lineman. So Anthony Munoz was even more special in that uh, perspective. So that kind of drove me. Um, to, uh, you know, following the Bengals and starting that fandom. Um, and then I actually went to my first game, um, 1987. Um, it was in November. We played the Houston Oilers. Um, really good game, but we lost that year. If you remember 87, we didn't do very well, but that following year we did really well. Um, but, you know, that game sparked a lot of things in me as well. as like, uh, you know, Jim Breach kicked a, a lot of field goals that game. Anthony Munoz, again, um, he caught a touchdown pass as a lineman. Uh, from Boomer Sice. And so all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, intrigued me. And that's what's uh, propelled me into this fandom for the Bengals. Awesome. Sure. Awesome. So uh, you, you you mentioned you've been a Bengals fan for a long time. Okay. What is your absolute best memory as a Bengals fan? And then since we're doing that, you got to say your worst memory too. So, so there, there's a lot of good memories, right? And, and then there's a lot of bad memories too. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah. Best memory has to be against the Raiders. Um going to the playoffs, okay. um, just understanding that um, persona of that game, that environment, um, the people around us. There was, you know, we've gotten a lot of good fans um, that's joined the, the Who Day Nation here over the last couple of years, which is great. Uh, I love the expansion of the, the fan base. Um, and a lot of us older guys who's been around the fans, um, we have children, and none of them has ever seen the Bengals win a playoff game. Uh, so that game really stuck out to me. I mean, we were – emotional, smoking cigars, jumping up and down, hugging and kissing everybody around us. It was just, it was a great moment. And it's, uh, it's one of those moments I'll never forget for sure. Um, for the worst ones, um, let's see. So you got the, the 90s. Yeah. You can just kind of put that in the, <laughs> in the, the realm. Whole but, uh, 90s. Again, the same year, it's going to have to be our loss in the Super Bowl. You know, I had the privilege to go there and just being, being there in the moment, of course, it was an emotional time for us as fans. But then that last minute and a half was even worse. So, yeah. uh, um, so that was probably my most down moment as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up what you're known for the the persona, Tony the Tiger, the face paint. Uh, how did this all start? And did you have any idea that it would kind of? Uh, I mean, it literally is. Let's put it this way: it literally is a thing where every single game, someone in the household. We'll go, there he is, there's Tony, because yeah. we'll see you in the stands. Did you know this would become a thing, or were you just did it on a lark one day? How'd this all start? Yeah, I would I would have never thought that uh, Tony the Tiger would grow to uh, uh, the fandom that it is right now. So it's uh, it's amazing. But pretty much it's, it's a simple story. Um, I'm, you know, just a normal guy going to a game, jersey, ball cap, that kind of thing, having fun. Um, but this time my daughter um, was going with us, and uh, she's like, hey, Dad, let's put some – face paint on and I'm like okay let's go do it so she painted me up and 
it was fun. And, you know, and who can say no to their daughter anyway, you know, right? And sure. yeah. uh, getting her engaged to go to the game was even, you know, just a big uh, moment for me as well. But to allow her to, to start this whole thing and paint me up was, uh, you know, just a phenomenal that, you know, just happened. Uh, went to the game and, you know, people liked it. And, you know, I liked it. I got to uh, be able to cut up a little bit more and act a little bit more goofier, you know, because people didn't know who I was. Sure, sure, and, yeah. You know, and it was fun. And, uh, but uh, yeah, that's how it all started. And then um, pretty much, uh, you know, she was uh, going into boot camp and, uh, you know, she'd been painting my face every game since then. And she left to go to boot camp and I had to try to figure it out for myself. So I had an off season too that year, uh, try to figure it out and paint and uh, trying to do it in the mirror myself. And, and it is what it is today. So that's, that's kind of the story. Real, real quick follow-up question. Was it, you did it once and it, it was it, you were, you were hit the ground running. Uh, I don't know the history of it. Was it, was it once and then maybe you brought it back a year later or the first time you did it, you had a blast and you just kept it rolling. Yeah. So basically when she did it the first time, she did it every other game after that, you know, with, uh, um, you know, even if she was going or not, I would wake her up in the morning. She would uh, come down <laughs> and put my face on for me. And, uh, so I haven't missed a game, uh, not being Tony, uh, I call it Tony up. So, uh, not being Tony'd up for the last 12 years. So it's been a, awesome. a real good ride. Waking up with her dad early Sunday morning to do face paint probably helped her with those early mornings in boot camp, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just just to follow up on that, how long did I saw the first episode of, of of In the Jungle and it was it was you and Jim heading up to Cleveland and you it showed you doing the face paint in the mirror. How long did it take you to get to the point where you were learning to do it to the point you could do it in a moving car in the mirror? I mean, it was pretty amazing because it looks really, really good. It's amazing that you're able to do it in a car with a tiny little mirror. It's it's nuts. Yeah, so from the jungle is actually the first time I've done it in a moving car. So, oh, cool. uh, there you go. Perfect. I was I was really nervous about it to be <laughs> honest with you. So I had That's all great. my gear with me, and I had all these things just in case something happened. Um, I had a bigger mirror with me as well, and um, you know, like you said, we're driving up in uh, Jimmy's car up the the city up north, and uh, the guy's like, "All right, let's start." And I'm like, "All right." So I, mean, I was a little nervous, but uh, it worked out great. Um, I've I've done it in a car before, but it wasn't moving. Right. Um, right. And, um, you know, it used to take me like an hour, hour and a half to do it when I first started, you know, the first year or so, year and a half. And, um, you know, I got it down to about 30, 35 minutes now. So it's almost like I can do it in my sleep, but um, yeah. it's a lot oh, of I'd fun. I'd imagine the it's, muscle memory alone at this point, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like I can almost do it in my sleep. It's like I look in the mirror and I just do it. And, um, and it's funny because uh, I had a couple opportunities where um, one was with John John from Kiss 107, if you guys mm -hmm. know him. Uh, we did a thing with him and I actually, he was the first one that I actually tried to paint like myself oh, okay. um, in the studio. So we did that. And then um, a second opportunity was um, I do a, I do a, a Tony's tickets for kids. And um, one of the kids wanted to be Tony'd up. So uh, I took the time at the tailgate to, to do his face as well. So awesome. it was cool. And uh, um, you know, I love doing it. And then, you know, this is not just for the attention, but it's just for what, what Tony can bring from being able to do that kind of stuff. So it's great. Sure. Oh, sure. So what a great segue that was, because the next question is, I want you to tell us about Tony's tickets for kids. How like, we'll explain, first of all, what it is, what, what you do, and then how you got started and kind of how it's grown over the years. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've been, uh, with Bengal Jim and friends tailgate now going about five years. Um, you know, it's a group of guys who just, uh, you know, put on a heck of a tailgate and we use that platform to do all kinds of good stuff, charity work. And, um, you know, and, 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 and this program came out of it as well. And it's called Tony's tickets for kids. And basically what had happened is a couple of years ago, we got some donated tickets and I basically wanted to make sure, you know, I mentioned my first experience at the, at the football game back in 87. And it was something that stuck with me all these years and has helped me become the fan that I am. And that's pretty important. And if you think about the kids nowadays, and especially the last three years, the opportunities for those kids to go to games are pretty limited. One, because of the cost, right? Because they're relevant yes. now. Um, and two is, you know, society has changed a lot where you got a lot of kids that are gaming. And I'm not, and I'm not banging against the, the game uh, realm at all. But to get those kids out and into the NFL stadiums and supporting their team and that kind of thing is really important to me. And you know, guys like me, we ain't going to be around forever. And to have fans, potential fans, come up through the realm and and, and over the years to be maybe uh, the next Tony the Tiger is pretty awesome. So I take a lot of pride in that. And 
um, basically we just take tickets and I, I do a little uh, competition with videos and people DM me and that kind of thing of why they should be going to the game and you know and then we pick a winner and they get to get to have a good experience and like I said we wanted to be the best experience for them so they can remember it so we bring them to the tailgate we get them up on the stage we make the crowd you know say who day to them we make it a big deal uh, we got Ron Boyle who uh, makes the custom chains that you probably have seen all over mm -hmm. the place he uh, he volunteers and donates his time to go ahead and create a chain for each child um, that goes to the game with, you know, their favorite player or whatever it may be, their name. Um, you know, we usually try to give them T-shirts or a jersey or something to go with it. And we just make sure they have a great time because it's important. So. That's awesome. It, it's super yeah. important. I mean, just like you said, just getting kids out of the house. You know, I mean, they have things now that would have been, you know, I'm sure I would have stayed inside all day long if I had a PS5 too when I was a kid. But yeah, right. no, it's, it's super important <laughs> to get out and get involved. It's awesome that you're doing that. Um, Talk about a, a lifetime memory too. That's the kind of story you're going to tell when you're 50 years oh, old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, you'll sure. be you'll be like, oh no, I didn't tell you about that. Oh yeah, I once won this competition and I went to the Bengals game and they did such and such and this and this. Like you will literally carry yeah. that story for the rest of your life. At least I would. I'd still be Usher. telling that story. Ushering and like in, us, and like most of us, we remember that first game. You know that oh, first yeah. experience, oh, yeah. and whether it was a win or lose or whatever, we still remember that. And um, you know, I just still remember my game from you know the '87 and. It's important, so I think it's uh, something that uh, more people should do, and and it's on the on the hearts of every fan who donates the tickets. It's it's amazing, you know. People donate them tickets to us in hopes of uh, kids going uh, to their first game, and um, I make sure I help to facilitate that, and and you know, hopefully, it continues for the years to come. So I, I did have a question before we started recording. You started talking a little bit about how how many games you've been to in a row. So how many games have you been to in a row? Um, I think I just completed my 47th game in a row. So uh, okay. it's kind of a funny story. Um, I've went to, I think, almost 200 over my whole um, life as a, uh, you know, a, a fan. But uh, it was a few years ago. It was actually the Super Bowl year. Um, we went to uh, Canton for our Jungle to the Hall event. And um, there was a bunch of us. There's like eight or ten of us up there that, you know, we all kind of hang out and help with the tailgate and travel together. And uh, someone threw out like, "Hey, let's go to all the games." And we're like, "Okay, yeah, sure, let's try it." And <laughs> yeah, but we, my arm. <laughs> yeah, but we never would have thought there would have been uh, all the playoffs and the Super Bowl. So uh, it was a phenomenal year, and that kind of started the trend. And I've continued that effort, and a couple of us um, have continued that effort as well. So yeah, um, my goal is a hundred. Um, if I can go more than a hundred, I will. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of creative budgeting and, uh, yeah, I bet. sacrificing to try to, to try to do that. But, uh, it's a lot of fun and, um, I hope to be able to continue it. Like I said, until I get my goal to a hundred. Well, Especially, I hope like that you said you... with, uh, the cost of tickets going up, I mean, it's the price yeah. of success, but Ooh, I was, I was pricing yeah. some out the other day. I was like, I did not realize how expensive they got. If you want any kind of a good seat. Yeah. Right, right. And, you know, and, I work for the, the local utility company as my day job, but uh, it wasn't enough to support my uh, my uh, addiction with the Bengals. So I did some side works, cutting trees with a buddy of mine, that kind of thing. So uh, I called it my football money. There and, you, go. Uh, you know, we save up during the summer. I don't use any vacation hardly in the summer. We don't really go on trips. And, you know, God love my wife. She she's just as much of a big fan as I am. Uh, so she travels with me and, um, you know, we're doing the stadium tour like a lot of people are. Uh, so we've completed uh, 27 stadiums now. Um, you know, she's going to be going to Nashville with me and, uh, you know, San Fran and Arizona, Jacksonville. So it's good to have your partner and my wife, you know, uh, supporting me in that effort. And, and as well as she's having a lot of fun with it as well. Good, good, good. I do have one quick question before Kevin's going to ask you one more to finish it. What's, you said you've been to 27 stadiums. Other than Paycor, because we know that's your favorite stadium. What's your favorite stadium? You know, it's uh, we get asked this a lot. So it's kind of a mixed question for me. So I look at it from an experience perspective. Um, I like Buffalo. The first time I went to Buffalo. Okay. Um, it was right, you know, it was right after Dalton, um, you know, won mm -hmm. the game and got them into the, the playoffs. So everybody loved us. Um, we got to do the wing challenge. Got to go to Niagara Falls. And, and the environment in the stadium was great. People were really cool to us. Um, but from a stadium point of view, it was Vegas until this preseason game. Uh, we went to Atlanta and we went okay. to Mercedes-Benz. And I, I think by far right now, that's my favorite stadium. Um, okay. um, and, and some of the reasons, one, they got low concessions, beers cheap, foods cheap. The seats were awesome. Um, they're nice and big to so us bigger guys. Uh, got plenty of room. 
didn't have to get out of the aisle way for people to walk in front of you. Just some little things like that yeah. that people really just don't think about. It really goes a long way when you go to a lot of games. So that's my favorite stadium so far. You have a least favorite? Least favorite? Uh, city I mean, up north. Yeah, I was, about, I was just about yeah. to say it. I was just about to say it. You I mean, know it's got to be the answer, right? What other answer could there be? It's always, uh, <laughs> it just seems always miserable up there with the lake and the whether it's rain like this past, yeah. you know, this past year. I mean, drizzled and rain the whole time. Um, you know, or it's snow, it's cold because the wind coming off. You know, it's, eh, you know, it is what it is, but uh, yeah. that's probably not my, that's my least favorite for sure. Okay. Uh, good on you, Jason, for calling it Paycor, by the way. I still call yeah, it yeah, down yeah. Oh, almost I know. every single time. It's going to take me years to get over that one. Um, yep. Yeah, thank you for doing this. We want to end this just with a prediction. Um, this, I don't know when this is posting, but the Titans game is up next. You got a score prediction for us? Where's your, where's your head on in this game? So we were talking earlier. I don't like doing score predictions. I think it's going to be a, a, a good game. Um, I am yep. concerned about um, you know our quarterback not being 100%. Uh, I think the intentions and their mindset is we're going to win that game, which uh, that's a great uh, culture to have in the locker room. I think that'll help propel us uh, into uh, the rest of the season. Uh, but I do have them going 14 and three this year. So we've already nice losing question. two at the beginning. You know, we only got one more to lose. So uh, yeah. um, we'll kind of go from there. But uh, I'm hoping for a really good game, good turnout. And, you know, and the one good thing about um, uh, Tennessee is um, it's, you know, only four hours away. Right. So I, yes. I'm expecting to see a lot of Who Day Nation there and um, a lot of black and orange and white there to, to help support the team. And that's always fun. And, you know, we we have we have our traveling tailgate. So we'll be there to help uh, get the party going early. And, uh, um, you know, and I'm hoping to drive home with a victory. So there you go. that's about what I can say about that one. But there you go. Well, hey, uh, thank you. Three. I really, really like it real quick. Uh, I take it you're you're thinking Super Bowl, though. I mean, I'm still in that headspace. I'm not willing to let it go yet. I mean, I know we yeah. had a, a rough start, but we've had it before. I'm I'm still thinking Super Bowl, man. I really am. Well, is that where you're at? Yeah, I still have a lot of confidence that we're going to be uh, the first uh, team to AFC North uh, to have three uh, titles in a row. Uh, I think, um, you know, we're going to continue that effort, and we're going to be uh, in Vegas um, yep. next year. So we'll, we'll go from there. Yep. Yep. I, hope, I hope within your 100 games, there's multiple Super Bowl win, winning games that you're going to and – and coming home. That's that's what I hope. So yeah, I think uh, you know, with we all know it with uh, you know, you know, it takes a team to, to win these games, of course, mm-hmm. but it also takes a good leader. And I think uh, Joey B is a, definitely a good leader for us. Um yep. the, his work ethic and what he brings to the table, the locker room, um, his decision making, you know, we've all seen it. He's a he's a, oh, yeah. a top notch player yep. and you know, we got him signed up and he's gonna be around for a little bit longer. So I think there's multiple Super Bowls and championships in our in our uh, future for sure. I think yeah. so too. Like Burrow said, so the windows his whole career, man. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. If he, if he's not a multiple Super Bowl winner, I, I don't know what I'm looking, I don't understand football. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, like, yeah. And what quarterback do you hear actually say they want to play their whole, you know, nobody. career at one team? You don't yep. usually see, you know, see or hear that. Yep. So no. I, I believe him. I, I you I know, I, I think he's going to be here and I think he's going to, his goal is to bring multiple championships to this city and to this team. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think he will. I think he will. Well, Anthony, a.k.a. Tony the Tiger, we appreciate you coming on this show. Uh, we can't wait. We're not exactly sure when it's going to get up, but we're going to get it up soon. Um, again, for everybody watching, this is our uh, Orange and Black Insider fan highlight. Uh, check it out. We're going to come out with a new one every month. Um, Anthony, I, again, I really appreciate you coming on, just sharing your experience cool. as a Bengals fan, sharing about – uh, uh, tickets for the tickets for kids, everything that you guys are Tony's tickets for kids, everything that you guys are doing. It's awesome. Uh, I hope that you guys go down to Nashville and bring home a win. And then you're going, obviously you're going uh, to all the games. So just bring home wins every week. Right? Yeah. You know, they can only lose one more. So that's right. They can only lose one more and uh, exactly. uh, we'll do our best to support them where we can. And, uh, and, you know, thanks to you guys for what you're doing. You know, we, we have a lot of podcasts and stuff mm-hmm. that, out there right now. We have a lot of tailgates going. We got a lot of people traveling. It's so awesome to be able to travel around to the other cities and while you're in the airports and all that kind of stuff. And you're seeing Bengal gear and you're seeing fans. It's 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 absolutely amazing for for us you know, t- old timers. It's been around forever. You know, we had some rough years where people were burning their bangle clothes and that kind of thing. And now you just oh, see sure. it everywhere. And um, it's, it's really cool. The, the fan base and what you guys are doing, 
um, it, it's awesome. So really appreciate your all support as well for myself and Bengal Jim and, and friends tailgate and, and what you guys are doing in the fan base. It's awesome. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. And Thank everyone, you. when you're watching on Sunday, keep an eye peeled for the, the, the stadium cam as uh, you know, they come in and out of commercial and you, I'm sure you will see Anthony all, you call it all tonied up, right? That's you right. See him all tonied up leading who day chance on the road in Nashville. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Anthony, very much for, for joining us. Thank you, Kevin. For everybody, I'm Jason. We'll see you next time. Who day? Who day? Who day?